Anvita D'Souza. Sorry, yeah, that's just a message telling us. <laughs> Okay, so Dr. Nandita D'Souza, I think she needs no introduction, but um, Nandita is a developmental and a behavioral pediatrician, uh, the lover for life of children and everybody who cares for them. Uh, Nandita is the director of the SETI Center for Child Development and Fi Family Guidance in Goa. Uh, this is a multidisciplinary facility that offers family-centered care for a range of developmental, behavioral and learning challenges. An eternal child at heart, Nandita believes that vitamin F for fun is essential for mental and physical well-being. Um, Setu works directly with children and families, as well as through partnerships with various professionals, uh, including teachers, government and non-government agencies, and the community at large. And by using strength-based and inclusive approach, uh, Setu seeks to create a more just and joyful world for every child. So I'm, with no further wait, I'm just going to ask Nandita to take us through the session. The floor is all yours, Nandita. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Nidhi, for that warm welcome. Today is such an exciting day for me, and I'm really grateful to AFA for giving me this wonderful opportunity to talk to two amazing women, uh, Ruchi and Rakshita. Then let me introduce them uh, to all of you here. So Ruchi Varshne is a multifaceted person, person who loves, there's a long list, sports, yoga, cooking, sketching, embroidery, and teaching. She's married and is the mother to four-year-old Shivai. Ruchi is an RCI set certified special educator for autistic kids and adults. She also has an MBA in, with the specialization in HR and finance. So after completing a diploma in special education in autism spectrum disorder from AFA, she chose to do what she loves the most, and that is working with kids and adults with autism and devoting her life to spreading awareness as an autistic advocate. Through sharing her personal experiences about what it actually feels like to be on the spectrum, she hopes to bridge the gaps in understanding across society. Her objective, is to help autistic kids and adults and their families create a happy and fulfilled life for themselves by focusing on their strengths. And she firmly believes that neurodivergence is necessary for society to thrive. Welcome, Ruchi. My next guest here is Rakshita Shekhar. She's an educator and consultant for disability rights organizations and schools. Rakshita has a master's in intellectual and developmental disabilities from the University of Kent in the United Kingdom. She has extensive experience as a teacher in both general education and spe special education situations. She's a member of two international advocacy organizations, that's neuroclastic.com and Universal Design for Learning, the special interest group. Rakshita is passionate about pedagogy, autism and inclusion. And her approach is centered uh, around developing good mental health in disabled children. Being an autistic, she ardently advocates for autistic children and adults through her poetry, essays, her talks, and the training programs. She is the first openly autistic person in South Asia uh, to be nominated as a board member of an autism charity, the world famous Action for Autism. She hopes to show that disabled people are essential to solve society's biggest problems. And she dreams of a world where all live and let live. Welcome, Rakshita. Uh, with the intro introductions complete, let's settle down to enjoy what I'm confident will be a very enlightening session. There will be three main segments today. First, we'll focus on getting a diagnosis. Second, we'll talk about autism and motherhood. And lastly, some wisdom for the world from both Ruchi and Rakshita. That will be followed by a question and answer session. So let's get started. Getting a diagnosis of ASD as an adult can be a very complicated journey. Ruchi and Rakshita, we would love to hear your story and what the process was like for you. So Rakshita, I'm going to direct my first question to you. Please tell us when and why you started thinking that you may be on the autism spectrum and how did you get diagnosed? Rakshita. Thank you, uh, Nandita. Uh, so I started suspecting autism in late 2018 
um, very soon after my son was born. I wanted to understand why I had so much trouble understanding expectations at work, why I would get so irritated at background noises, and why I always felt like an alien from another planet. Uh, I went to many clinical professionals to confirm my doubts. Uh, by this time, I was already a special educator working with autistic uh, children for many years. Um, and still most uh, clinicians were very rude and dismissive. They didn't even want to test me. But finally, I got my diagnosis in 2020 uh, at AFA. Right. Thanks, Rakshita. It's so interesting to hear that you were self-aware and picked up the challenges in understanding social expectations as well as the sensory issues yourself. Well done on your persistence in pursuing a diagnosis despite your unfortunate experiences with professionals. Uh, what about you, Ruchi? Please describe your journey to an autism diagnosis. Uh, Ruchi, you'll have to unmute yourself. So I want to share that uh, this is the first time I am sharing uh, and discussing about my uh, diagnosis. So might be a lengthy one. Uh, okay, so uh, since childhood, uh, I was having uh, difficulties in communicating with my peer groups uh, and <clears throat> be friends with them. Uh, and my parents always found that something different, there, there was a difference with me. And uh, they, uh, like I, uh, and also I had uh, certain uh, sensory difficulties, like extra, like I, the need of uh, ex extreme body pressure, focus, and uh, se I was sensitive to lights, even sunlights, and uh, with the tight. Uh, and, and the garment stitching and uh, so my mother used to stitch uh, separately for me and uh, so I started stitching uh, since uh, last week. So I used to study uh, very uh, seriously and I used to study for, uh, for hours and just forget everything and until my uh, parent tell me parents tell me ki, uh, stop and relax and or eat something. So, uh, yeah. So focus. Uh, so I was really focused to on my self improvement. And uh, being a girl, I was uh, really told to show good behavior only. So uh, and I at school I was an extreme rule follower. So uh, because of that, teachers used to say. Uh, say that uh, Ruchi uh, is uh, Ruchi sometimes behaves like a puppet. So I really got uh, hurt and uh, was sad for many days. And uh, what and uh, because uh, whatever I was doing with greater effects, it, it was getting criticized rather than replaced. Uh, and then uh, in 2010, I finally. Uh, <clears throat> 2010, when I was doing the job after completing my MBA, I was facing difficulties as a teacher. After uh, as a teacher, uh, my at that point of time, my mother uh, told me uh, what she read in a newspaper about autism, and she asked asked me if I could have autism. Uh, so I. At that point of time, I didn't know what autism is, uh, uh, and then <clears throat> she was the first one to uh, suspect that uh, from childhood the differences in me which I was having, uh, like sensory issues and focus, difficulties focusing and sharing attention. Uh, so, uh, so she gave me the information uh, information about the autism. Uh, to learn more and understand myself better, I also joined uh, a special education course uh, in autism from Action for Autism. Thanks, Ruchi. Uh, we are all so honored to be witness to your first public sharing of your autism diagnosis. 
and you have described all your challenges so well. Um, you know, you, you describe yourself as a rule follower and really wanting to be a good girl. And despite all your efforts, you were still struggling. That must have been so hard. And hats off to your mother for being such a perceptive observer and sharing her thoughts with you. Uh, and that was an action that was life changing for you in so many ways, even leading to a change in your career. Uh, so let's talk next about how the diagnosis has impacted your lives. Uh, why is getting a diagnosis important and what difference can it make? Rakshita, how did things change for you in 2020 when you received your diagnosis? Rakshita, you'll have to unmute. Yeah, thanks. Just a second. Um, when I got my diagnosis in uh, 2020, I remember my first reaction uh, to the clinician was, yes, finally, I was right. I was very happy I got it. Uh, I also cried a lot. Uh, like, you know, how athletes cry after they win a race. I guess because it was, the journey was difficult. And because I finally had answers to who I was. I was not lazy, weird, arrogant, cool, idiot. Uh, I was autistic and uh, that really, really positively helped me have an identity for myself. Uh, before the diagnosis, it was as if I couldn't do the smallest things properly. I didn't smile properly. I didn't know how to talk properly. I didn't know when to talk. Every little thing I was scolded and punished and uh, it had made me lose confidence in myself quite a lot. Uh, the diagnosis helped me, uh, therefore, to understand myself better. Uh, it helped me begin the healing process of my soul, I guess, uh, begin to develop a positive identity for myself and uh, really start seeking help that I always wanted that I always needed, uh, but I never got either because people didn't understand or because I was too ashamed to ask. Um, so yeah, that's how it's. Thanks, thanks Rakshita. You know, you have conveyed the transformational impact of an accurate diagnosis so well. And I'm sure it will answer a question that many people often grapple with, which is what is the point of getting a diagnosis now, right, when you're an adult? Uh, but both of you have said, you know, how it uh, has impacted your lives. And in, in addition, as you have shared, for many autistic adults, the diagnostic process is a long and painful one, leading to delays and frustration. However, it sounds like despite all those ordeals, it is a worthwhile quest. Uh, Ruchi, what was your experience when the diagnosis was finally made after you know many many months and several encounters with doubting doctors? Ruchi. At first, when I got to know self, uh, got the first time that I got self diagnosis, I was like I was really happy. And moreover, it was a phase when I started getting answers to all the uh, questions. And uh, like my, I used to overthink a lot about the so I used to get a lot of answers and slowly was uh, confidence. Uh, diagnosis led me, uh, give me. Uh, choose my body. Uh, so it helped me set my goals uh, accordingly, uh, according to my strengths and weaknesses. So uh, the self-diagnosis also led me to switch uh, my career, uh, which was well suited for me. And as a special educator, uh, I 
I became a special educator in the field of autism. Uh, uh, however, I felt like uh, I still needed a, a formal diagnosis uh, as I, I was having difficulty in explaining my condition to my uh, Ruchi, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you're, you're not very clear. Could you speak a little louder? Or maybe move closer to your device, please. Sorry to interrupt, but what you're saying is so important, and I want to make sure everyone can hear. Am, am I audible now? Much better. Thank you. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so and it was also difficult uh, without a formal diagnosis to take help from mental health professionals. Uh, so, my husband really encouraged me to take a formal diagnosis, and I got the diagnosis from Action for Autism in 2022. So before diagnosis, uh, doctors who were unaware of autism, they used to, they said that uh, my spinning uh, is a bad behavior which I am showing, and uh, they and started. And so I started at that point of time. I started feeling guilty about uh, doing what is actually what was actually relaxing me. Um, so uh, uh, there are some, uh, but luckily I, I was uh, after diagnosis. Whoever I told, they they showed acceptance and they, they really supported me. Uh, except few people uh, and including doctors who do not accept the fact that I am autistic since I have a high I am high functioning and I'm married or or I have a I have a Good academic background, so it was difficult there. Uh, but after, uh, and uh, sharing few things after diagnosis, like after diagnosis, I stopped too, pretending too much, like remove myself from the situation, uh, which which was previously causing me to be overwhelmed. Um, for example, like workshops. Uh, or the job with social skills were really demanded from me. So it helped me there. Uh, and I start after that I started started setting realistic goals for myself. And it uh, eventually it prevented me from uh, feeling disheartened, unmotivated and depressed for not being able to do what uh, neurotypicals can. Wow, I'm just so blown away by your testimony, Ruchi. And it is clear that the diagnosis has improved your lives in a multitude of ways. Uh, you know, improved your self-understanding and self-acceptance, uh, your ability to practice self-care, which is so important, and look after your sensory needs and so on. It's also improved your relationships with people. And your, you know, you've had a positive impact in changing societal attitudes especially with all those doctors who uh, will not accept because of their limited knowledge uh, so you know i'm sure that this webinar also will uh, add to that the power of uh, change that both of you are bringing about uh, so now let's move to our second segment which is autism and motherhood okay and uh, as individuals who have received a diagnosis in adulthood as well as being special educators. You have both experienced and witnessed neurotypical parenting. Both of you are mums to two lively and lovely young boys. How does being autistic influence your parenting style? Rakshita, please shine a light on your experiences of motherhood. You know, nobody asks us this question. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I understand my child very intricately, I believe. Uh, I have always known that I am hyper empathetic. I can sense people's emotions, uh, even if they can't sense it themselves. Uh, I know I have this ability that people tell me their deepest, darkest secrets. 
um but how it how it has translated to my life in my life as a mother is that i am very responsive to my child um i have a lot of patience with his quirkiness like um when he wants to see what will happen if he crumples a piece of cloth and throws it in the water at a certain speed what will happen to the crumpled cloth um uh, i'm i'm I, i i allow him to do these things i even like give him ideas on what to do next <laughs> we do a lot of sensory activities together like swimming in a tub full of different types of dals uh um he is as fierce about his autonomy and agency as i am um i am not uh not the type of parent who will say i am the mother so listen to me maine bol diya na bas ho gaya wahan pe kaam you just have to listen to me i'm not like that at all uh i i'm more like okay let's rationalize let's discuss let's understand let's reflect let's apologize to each other because during this discussion i would have done things that would have hurt you you would have done things that would have hurt me and this has been there since the time he was about 1 1 and a half years old so he is very good at uh, negotiating um already uh uh and also i think i he gets that thing from me you know that i have no respect for social hierarchies so i don't <laughs> okay. i don't expect him to have that respect <laughs> or that it's okay you don't have to listen to me just because i'm your mother <laughs> akshita sounds like you have put an end to parental monarchy or let's say motherarchy <laughs> and it sounds like autism has made you a very democratic parent who values and encourages your child's independence and voice how lovely <laughs> Ruchi you are a mother to four year old Shivai right how has motherhood been for you thus far being a district mother uh, sorry ruchi can you move a little closer please so yeah. being a district mother they have, uh, i faced a lot of struggles and there were many positives to it also so i just uh, start with uh, difficulties which i faced like uh, so uh, being an autistic mother it was extremely important for me to have uh, that so called me time uh, so initially i kept ignoring it and went into total burnout total burnout and really became depressed so much so that uh, like i needed uh, counseling sessions to overcome that and uh, even today it is a real struggle uh uh on a everyday basis uh, to follow my own uh, daily routine but yes day by day it becomes uh, better initially uh, when my baby was small i could dedicate more time to catering his needs but as he started growing up uh, growing old and uh, i wanted and he also wanted to talk more and wanted to go and play outside more uh, with other children and he has his needs to socialize so i had at that point of time i had difficulties uh, with uh, socialization socializing and also going out and was not that comfortable for me every time uh, on a regular basis so somewhere i felt guilty also uh that uh, i am not able to uh, you know make my child make my child uh, better socialize and uh, feel guilty about that i am not able to uh, am i able to communicate him uh, that much with uh, 
uh, should be uh, top. So, uh, but yes, it has become uh, more uh, better now. And also, like it was uh, in beginning, it was difficult for me to start com uh, communication with my child because he's a toddler. Uh, he's a toddler, and he cannot communicate his needs uh, that properly. So it was difficult for me to think ways uh, and think the uh, talks which I can uh, do with him. So uh, that was something I was. Uh, I'm like, I still have uh, difficulty with. And uh, so uh, with all these struggles now, uh, if, if um, like I come to the positives now, that I have really good bond with my child, uh, play games with him. Uh, even like if, uh, like if I am a child, with I am a friend to him, and which makes him happy. Um, and I understand him uh, like very much and his sensory needs. Uh, every child have his uh, sensory needs in early years. So I uh, really focus on sensory uh, play with him and make him happy. Uh, he, uh, so in early years, uh, my child uh, was really curious and still he is and he want to explore things. And so as an autistic mother, I understand this better compared to the neurotypical parent um, because uh, I was also curious in every aspect. So I gave him, uh, I gave him chance to uh, explore things on his own, uh, then uh, on his own, on his own terms and uh, without getting guilty or up, uh, he uh, or he might think that uh, he's upsetting me but i let him do it on his own terms so being a special educator also i start teaching uh, teaching him i start teaching him anywhere uh, like i uh, wherever he finds difficulty uh, i make him uh, know with Ease, he might uh, be ease uh, so that he can understand. Yes. Amazing. There's so many advantages uh, to being an autistic mother. As it looks like neurodiversity increases your knowledge and your sensitivity to your children's unique personalities as well as their needs. Uh, and both of you seem to have bags packed with all kinds of fun and tricks. Uh, so your kids are real lucky duckies. Uh, Ruchi, I really appreciate your point about self-care. That is so important to all persons, but very often neglected. And thank you for putting that center stage uh, and reminding us to pay attention uh, to it. Uh, okay, now the last segment, which is uh, wisdom for the world. Uh, and I, I know that there's so much to learn from both of you, not only about parenting, uh, as well as, uh, you know, other things. And I can see the clock is ticking fast. Uh, so let's move on and focus on sharing your pearls of wisdom as autistic advocates. Okay, so firstly, what advice do you have for parents who have an autistic child? Rakshita, please tell us how parents could be more supportive. Okay, so see in psychology, we say happy parents, raise happy children. Um, so parents really, really need to understand this. Uh, I think parents are aware of the fact that they're very stressed. A lot of them may have uh, used terms like, oh, I'm so anxious, I'm so depressed. They don't realize that it could be um, something that they can seek help with that they need guidance with. So parents, please go for counseling yourself. Work on your issues and learn how to handle social pressure. Very soon you'll realize that your actual problem is not your child at all. It's the society that's putting so much pressure on you on how 
to be a mother what what is good motherhood what is bad mother what you ate in pregnancy that's why this child has become like this and all those things are running in your head more than or influencing your actions it is not right to push your fears and pressures onto your child it causes a lot of trauma to the child uh, another critical factor is that uh, you know one usually one of the parent is autistic themselves or maybe a very close family member is autistic we know autism runs in the families very very rarely it does not run in the family um your autism uh, your child's autism may not look very similar to the adult's autism uh they might have been told they are weird aggressive stubborn uh a lot of parents come and say ha huh, but you know uh i also was like this only in childhood that person needs to accept themselves that person needs to understand their body that person needs to make peace with their body and start healing their soul this will turn your autistic child's uh life around learn how to balance your expectations um autism by definition means that your child is going to be very good at something and very bad at something they are going to have both one part genius and one part deficiency my parents always thought that i was capable of a lot of things in life and i guess that's why i i have done a lot of things in my life my mother always told me that the world doesn't understand me because they can't see what i can i would get so frustrated and i would cry and cry why does this happen why am i the only one who's facing this and she would say this to me that you are facing this because the world doesn't understand you and they don't understand you because they can't see what you can see that used to sort of put me in perspective uh give me some perspective uh about how to deal with my frustrations and the experience of disability around myself my dad always said that people like me who think differently they are the ones who change the world but even today i have episodes of regression like for some for example sometimes i cannot remember how to brush my teeth and my parents will come and tell me the small small steps like okay now take the brush now put the paste on the brush now brush your front teeth now brush your side teeth whatever sometimes they have to do that uh and after some days when i feel fit again and my brain is working again uh they will praise me and celebrate as if i have won the nobel prize uh basically what i'm trying to say is that yes your child is capable of a lot of things and yes there are going to be uh things that the, like you think the child is so intelligent so smart what they can't do this small thing also yes they cannot do that small thing that's what autism is and you need to understand how to balance your expectations in all, both those areas Thanks Rakshita uh, you have shared so many critical points for parents to keep in mind and it, you know it's so moving to listen to the ways in which your parents have supported and continue to do so uh, and it clearly shows that when parents are non-judgmental carers uh, encouraging coaches and enthusiastic cheerleaders it brings out the best in their children uh, Ruchi do share your top tips for parents of autistic children so uh, i think that parents uh, understand chil- their children the best and uh, my mother uh, giving an example my mother used to uh, understand my differences and teach me to flash cards when i was a toddler even though she didn't knew that i was autistic <clears throat> and uh, my uh, my father always 
uh, like uh, whenever i used to fail at few things he used to uh, like make me uh, make me do those things in advance uh, advance and always motivated me uh, so uh, parents are the best one to understand their uh, child and uh, so i want them to, uh, they should like uh, read and be aware about what autism is <clears throat> secondly like uh, give them uh, daily essential goals which are very important give them daily tasks if uh, it is it is uh, itself is a self motivating thing for them to do uh, alongside uh, relaxation activities and leisure activities they both the, both these activities should be uh, like uh, balanced Because uh, uh, balance and uh, so that uh, relaxing activities also have a value to it. And also give the child one-on-one time on a day. Uh, this is very important to do uh, one-on-one time to work and sit with him, be silly with him, and uh, be. Uh, dramatic and show facial expression, and this this really acts as a currency for for the autistic kids. And uh, try to give attention to their sensory needs at home also. Uh, uh, whenever you uh, with, with proper guidance or uh, what you understand, uh, like uh, if I give an example of myself, like uh, there are days when I really Uh, demotivated and depressed and don't want to do anything. So if I get a bowl of uh, namkeen which I like, or uh, I get head pressure which sometimes I do, really so I get really motivated to do further work which is coming and get going because my sensory needs were addressed. Right. Thanks, Ruchi. That was such a sweet list. Uh, In-person FaceTime, not the one on the screen, is so important for child development and bonding. Or namkeen says, "Sab kuch mumkeen hota hai." Sounds like. <laughs> Now let's shift the spotlight from parents to professionals. How can they be more sensitive to the needs of autistic children and adults? Uh, Rachita, please do share some words of wisdom for doctors, therapists, teachers, and other professionals. Uh, who work with autistic children and adults thank you uh, for this question and if there are professionals in the room thank you for listening um there is a lot that professionals can do um first is use a total communications approach use visuals um technology like apps on the phone apps for writing typing communication gestures etc speaking is not a superior form of communication so don't insist on speaking uh if you notice autistic children uh if you just notice autistic children in a you know uh, two autistic children together or in a group and how they if you observe how they bond with each other uh even adults there's very little talking that we do and we bond over various forms of communication um so uh, don't insist so much on speaking all the social communication can be done without it sensory needs are critical so professionals must take time to read and understand the sensory report of the child, of the um person you're working with uh lots of body regulation secrets are hidden in the sensory profile so uh please understand the sensory profile of the client you're working with um counseling from a trauma educated and neurodiversity paradigm affirming therapist um who uses a mix of different modalities like somatic healing art and dance and movement and speaking etc that helps a lot um we often in 
uh, you know, the one of the biggest things that uh, the society has a complaint about against autistic people is our behaviors. And naturally, uh, everybody is looking for behavior therapy. Um, and I want to put, say this, that uh, no, we don't really need behavior, behavior therapy. What we need is counseling, like from a very good counselor who is trauma educated, who is neurodiversity paradigm affirming, and who uses a mix of different modalities. That's what we really need and that's what really works. Uh, every professional can add value to an autistic person's life journey. And please therapists start working with adults also. No, hum, we are also like, hum bhi hai. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rakshita. That I think is a very, very well articulated appeal. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, you've spoken about a very important point about trauma and neurodiversity and how often they travel together and therefore they must be addressed to promote optimal uh, mental and physical health. Uh, in addition to that, the sensory needs, which are so important. And I go back to what Ruchi said earlier about how she needed to stim in order to feel good and keep herself calm. But the professionals uh, thought it was something bad, a bad behavior with bad consequences. She, so she, something that you know was helping her, even that she kind of didn't have access to and felt guilty about that. So thank you so much for coming back to this again and again. And I think that message is loud and clear and hopefully everyone who's there at this session today will, uh, and who hears the recording will pay attention to these words which come from your heart. Uh, so from professionals now, let's talk about people with autism. Um, you know, Ruchi, there are many individuals who suspect that they may be on the spectrum, but they're very confused about next steps. So what words of advice do you have for them? For the autistic uh, adults, uh, I would suggest that. Uh, 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 Ruchi, sorry, a little closer, please. Yeah, thanks. Okay. I don't so, want uh, anyone to miss even one word of what you're saying. Yeah, so go ahead. Autistic adults, uh, I would say that do get evalu evaluated, like evaluate yourself. Uh, they are uh, tools like RADS, which are available online. So firstly, you uh, evaluate yourself and then write, uh, write down how you feel and what things are matching with that. And also get a formal diagnosis if you are ready and, uh, and do not give up on evaluation until and unless you you are content and satisfied with the results and don't get bothered from what others people might think about ki ye aise behave kar rahi hai kyon kar rahi hogi kaise kar rahi hai to kyon kar rahi hai matlab don't think too much aap is bare mein zyada na sochu always remember that because you uh, you think in details so lot of things are going in your mind uh, at the same time, and kabi kabi aisa bhi hota hai that you are uh, struggling with uh, sensory issues at the same time, sensory over overwhelm, sensory sensory issues at the same time, and are overwhelmed too. So it is really uh, difficult sometimes, and it is okay to be uh, difficult uh, to be uh, in that situation, but it is not okay to do not uh, uh, give consideration to yourself for that. So be kind to yourself and do not feel ashamed ashamed about necessary adjustments to like uh, like tools, like uh, visuals, to-do lists, and recording important things for your better understanding and using calendar, uh, for small things even. Yeah. Right. So, so, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ruchi. This is very pertinent information. And 
I think your emphasis on getting a diagnosis, even if one has to climb a mountain, uh, you know, it's, it's clear that you must make that effort. I also love the way you addressed the fear of being judged by others and the stigma around using helpful tools. Uh, so what I hear you saying loud and clear is be yourself, um, be different with pride and find your tribe. Yes. Right. So uh, thank you. Uh, Rakshita, anything you could add uh, to help adults who may be on the spectrum but are not yet diagnosed? Yeah, sure. Um, read up on uh, literature written by autistic people. So uh, there are lots of YouTube videos. There are lots of uh, um, blogs written by autistic people about their experiences, books, movies, um, neuroclastic.com. Uh, is a very good resource. It's a, a collection of um, more than 200 autistic people who write about different experiences from their life. So they, we've pretty much covered every topic under the sun uh, when it comes to autism. It's a very good resource to understand yourself. Um, you can uh, join autistic adult support groups. Um, even if you just suspect, you don't need a formal diagnosis to join these groups. Uh, there are, we, I think, four or five groups that have been started in India since the last two, three years. You can reach out to AFA and they will put you in touch with these uh, groups. They are wholly run by autistic people. They are for autistic people. Um, and it will make you feel seen, it will make you feel validated, it will make you, uh, like you can ask questions, you can learn from others' experiences, you'll not feel alone basically in these groups. Third, reflect on your strengths and challenges and make notes on why you think you might be autistic. Um, uh, and take a person with you when you're going for the assessment, the formal assessment. Uh, the process can be tiring uh, and having an ally to keep your spirits up is very, very helpful. Um, it, I've accompanied a few people uh, to their autis autism diagnosis. And uh, what I find is that at that moment, and this happened to me as well when I went to so many clinicians, uh, that we are not able to articulate at that point. We start talking about like things, uh, other things, uh, and the clinician might not understand at all, and they might start seeing, they might start misdiagnosing us. A lot of autistic people get misdiagnosed uh, as having uh, bipolar disorder or borderline personality disorder. Uh, or just anxiety disorder, uh, these can be there also. I'm, I'm not saying these are not true at all, but the autism that bit does not get seen uh, because the, the clinician is not aware and we, um, in that moment of anxiety, lose our... Uh, train of thought. So having an ally really, really helps. For me, it was my husband and wherever I can go with autistic people to their diagnosis, I do. Um, Thanks, Rakshita. That's that's such an important point. Having been supported yourself, uh, you are now a buddy to uh, others. And, you know, everyone is the expert of their own lives. So when you write down what you understand best, which is your own experience, uh, you may have to be very convincing and forceful. However, what you're saying is when it's written down, uh, you will be more articulate and more uh, organized in how you convince that uh, doubting professional. So thank you so much. Very, very important information. You know, the pearls of wisdom you all have shared, we can string them together and make a fantastic jewelry set, I think, to dazzle the world. Uh, thank you so much. Your honesty, authenticity, um, you know, your self-awareness, um, your attention to the little things, which are actually the big things. Uh, all this and much more uh, just shone through 
uh, all that you have shared with us uh, today and you have opened the minds and hearts of all of us so thank you so much i'm looking at the clock we have seven minutes before 5 pm and uh, we're going to move quickly into the question and answer section you can put your questions in the chat or raise your hand using that little uh, raise hand uh, icon uh, i'm sure there may be many questions but let's be mindful of a few things one uh, Rakshita and Ruchi are women who wear many hats. However, their main avatar today is autistic advocate. So please limit your questions to that one. They will not advise you on your child's IEP. Uh, second, there may be some questions that require reflection and long have long answers. So we will not have time for that today. I may have to make the decision to pass. However, you are welcome to send your emails to, um, you know, with a question to Action for Autism and I assure you they will get answered in writing. You can even choose what font size and line spacing you would like. It's also been a long and intense uh, session and I request, request all of us to be mindful of that. Uh, therefore, Rakshita and Ruchi, if there's any question that is challenging to answer today, uh, please let me know. You just say objection, your honor, and I will bang my fist and say objection sustained and we will pass that question. So all good things. Uh, let's uh, go back uh, to the question section. Do we have any questions in the chat? I'm just going to take a look. Uh, okay, so here's one where about schooling. So homeschool is very popular. Uh, what the two of you feel would have preferred would have preferred to have experienced as children, traditional school or homeschool? Uh, who would like to take that one? Any one of you? What would you advise for autistic children? Traditional school or homeschool? And in retrospect, for yourself. I don't mind answering that question. Go ahead, please. I've thought about this very hard and long for many, many, many years now. Um, this, uh, the simple one line answer to this question is that it really depends on the child. Um, but the more complicated answer is that it shouldn't depend on the child so much. It should also depend on the structure of the education system and the society. Um, it is very, very, very overwhelming to see and very saddening, very, not just saddening, like, uh, I don't have the right word for it right now, but it breaks my heart to see that more than half the autistic children are not even in the schools after age 10. Mainstream schools, may, there are hardly any autistic children beyond the age 10. And very, very few of them go back to special needs schools. The ones who leave mainstream schools. Uh, we all want to be in mainstream schools. Yes. Uh, we all deserve to have a high quality rigorous academic education given to us it's not okay to keep us at abcd level for till we are 15 16 assuming that uh, we cannot learn or that we are interested in vocational subjects rather than academics it's the failure of the teacher. It's the failure of the education, uh, the school, the education system that they have not been able to teach me in a way that I'll want. Uh, or I do not want in a way that I learn. Um, so if we ask the question, why are so many children homeschooled, autistic children homeschooled? It's really because the schools are throwing them out, number one. And number two, because the children just can't cope with that environment. So what needs to change is how our school systems are structured. And I find it very, very, very hard to convince schools to structure themselves and be more flexible and be more empathetic towards autistic students. Um, so, uh, 
uh, should autistic students be homeschooled? In this kind of a scenario, really their choice. I did my master's, uh, majority of my master's sitting in the classroom next to the main room because I couldn't stand the smells of the people in the class. And that was an accommodation that was given to everybody in the class. All the classes were live streamed. All the classes were recorded. Uh, people could sit in the adjacent rooms if they wanted. They could sit in the library if they wanted and listen to the same class at that same moment. Uh, or we could go back home and listen to the recorded versions about 10 days later. That's how I survived because I just couldn't stand the smell of perfumes in the class. So, right. uh, yeah, right. um, it, it really depends on the mm. child, but it shouldn't depend so much on the child. Yeah, the yes. society should also take a lot of responsibility for this. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, you have just nailed it with that answer where, uh, yeah, do what is best for the child. However, school should be changed so that they become uh, good for children and are able to adapt to the child. Uh, there are a few more questions, but we won't have time. But before we end, I must tell you about the um, long messages of praise and uh, people saying how enlightening this talk was, uh, you know, how informative it was and uh, thanking you for sharing uh, so many important tips and, um, you know, your own experience in such a courageous and uh, open uh, manner. So, uh, and of course, much, uh, many, many thanks to uh, Action for Autism uh, for always taking a leadership role in bringing the best uh, to all of us. So, uh, thank you, everybody. All good things, including sessions like this, have to come to an end. Uh, and it's been a fascinating conversation and an utter delight to talk to our warrior women, Rakshita and uh, Ruchi. I have learned so much. I think even my third eye has uh, opened up. Uh, I'm really indebted to Nidhi Single and Action for Autism for giving me this rare honor. And thanks to all of you who were here today uh, for sharing your thoughts, asking questions and cheering uh, Rakshita and Ruchi on. I think both of them have taught us that, uh, you know, having autism is not the end of life, far from it. Life may be hard with autism, but it is also a rich and full life. Uh, and regardless of whoever you are, there's always something you can do to make this a better world for all of us and especially our kids. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, your thoughts and your experiences. Uh, over to you, Nidhi, for the last few words. Thank you. Thank you, Nandita. And thank you, Ruchi and Rakshita, yet again. Um, really, this has truly been a privilege, especially, Ruchi, for you making your debut performance, your debut interview with us. Thank you for that. And Rakshita, it's, as always, it's such a pleasure listening to you um, and just learning from, from both of you. It's just been incredible. And Nandita, with your smiling face, as always amazing <laughs> thank you thank you so much everybody and i'm sure everybody would have enjoyed this as much as i did thank you so much everybody thank you for being here we'll thanks share the link to the, we'll, we'll, we'll share the link to the recording in a few days in the coming week thank you bye, bye and thanks have a lovely weekend the rest <laughs> and uh, Rakshita, are you going to now swim in the dal <laughs> with your son? <laughs> Today's quota is done, actually. Okay. <laughs> we swam in mud. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> Thanks, Ruchi. Oh, thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Nidhi. Thanks. <laughs>